Hi everyone, Glenda here from the ESSA Public Library, here with Carly and Emily today to talk to you about an exciting program we have going on this summer called Simcoe Reads. Simcoe Reads is a program that's going on between five different local libraries in Simcoe County. There's the ESSA Public Library, Barrie Public Library, Bradford West Willenbury Public Library, Innisfil Idea Labs and Library, and Midland Public Library. And each library has selected a book that they want their community to read this summer, as well as a champion to defend their book at our virtual debate, which will happen in September. So today we want to introduce to you ESSA Public Library's champion, Emily Wood. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. To get us started, we thought we would just ask, what are some interesting things about you? What do you think our community would like to learn about you? Yeah, I think, um, I think the biggest piece about me um, that some people don't know um, and that's a little bit uh, less publicly known is um, I'm a really big fiction writer. So in my free time, um, that's that's a lot of what I do is, um, you know, I write stories. So obviously I'm a big reader, as you can see from the books on my shelves behind me. Um, but I'm more than just a reader. I've always wanted to be a writer in some way, shape or form. And, um, you know, that's something that I've been working on over the last few years and um, have a, a new novel that I've just finished. And I'm kind of exploring that publishing path now and hoping to kind of make that dream reality so that's really exciting um, and kind of new for me um, and I, I write in kind of a lot of different genres so um, the I've got a couple of books under under my belts um, that are kind of just uh, general fiction I would say women's fiction um, I participated in National Novel Writing Month for the first time last year um, encouraged actually through the library which did a lot of promotion for it so that was really exciting um, and so I have most of a dystopian novel uh, finished and I'm hoping to wrap that up with the last kind of few thousand words this summer um, and I'm looking forward now that I've finished the one that I've been working on for a few years now really seriously um, moving on to a young adult fiction book so kind of exploring different genres and the next on my bucket list is kind of a thriller but I don't have the right idea for that one quite yet um, but that's really something that I, I would love to do at some point. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, so you alluded to your love of reading, which is very clear to us. And did that start at an early age? And was there one book that made you fall in love with reading? You know what? I think I always loved reading. There wasn't one book. I, I remember a lot of books from my childhood, but there wasn't one book. I, I really don't remember a time where reading wasn't a huge part of my life. Um, it was just, I, I don't even remember a time where I, I didn't know how to read. Um, so it's, it's always something that's been a huge part of me. Um, you know, my mom read a lot of stories to me as a kid, so I, I have those uh, kind of nice memories of, of certain, certain books. Um, but I think it was just always something that I was drawn to. Um, I spent a lot of time alone as a kid. I have a couple of siblings, but there's a bit of an age gap between us. So I spent a lot of time alone um, and, you know, just looked for ways to entertain myself and keep myself occupied. And so books were a really big part of that. And, um, you know, I was always kind of that, that kid at the party that had a book in the corner or was, you know, reading under the covers at the, you know, breaking the rules by reading past bedtime. And so it was very rebellious, but um, yeah, it's just always been a, a huge part of who I am. Yeah, but we can tell from your back, your background <laughs> that you still love yeah. books. <laughs> You've got your own yeah. library there. Yeah, that's actually something that, um, you know, we're, we're in our first house now and, and having a home library was always something that I wanted to have. That was kind of always that part of that, um, you know, dream home that I wanted. I, you know, people talk about Beauty and the Beast and you're either the kid who wanted the dress or you're the kid who wanted the library. And I definitely <laughs> wanted the library. <laughs> well, good for you for getting it. <laughs> um, so our next question, we just want to know, how long have you lived in Essa Township and what do you love about living in Essa? So we moved to Essa uh, almost three years ago now. Um, and for me, it's great for a couple of reasons. So I grew up in the country kind of outside of a big suburb or town. Um, so for me, it was very much like coming home and being in a really familiar environment, just kind of slower pace, quieter, like very community 
focused and oriented. Um, so that was really familiar to me. I've never been a, a big city dweller or anything like that. Um, so for me, it's it's a very comfortable place to be and having the farms around is, um, it's just very reminiscent of home, um, which is not that far away. But, um, but we also have some friends and family in the area, um, which makes it really great and also feel a lot like home and, and we're very comfortable here. But I think the thing that's made it stand out the most is that it really has a strong sense of community. And I think for me, the way that I've really ingrained myself into the community is through, in large part, the library from offering so many different programs. And, you know, I'm part of the, um, the one of the, uh, the book clubs and have participated in the running program and um, just various workshops and things like that. And, and through that, I've been able to um, you know, get to know a few different people and, and just have that familiar face when you're out and about in town or even at the library, you know, you recognize people and um, you can say a friendly hello and at trivia nights online and things like that, you're recognizing people. Um, and that's not something that even in the small town I was in before we really had. Um, so that's been really nice and I think a, a great way for me to, to feel like I'm not just living here, but really part of the community. Nice. Um, so the book that you've chosen uh, to defend and champion in um, Simcoe Reads is The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. And without giving any spoilers away, are you able to share a little bit with us about what the book is about? So The Saturday Night Ghost Club follows a 12-year-old boy over the course of a summer where his life changes. So he is um, kind of afraid of his own shadow, um, but he has this quirky and kind of unconventional uncle who uh, runs the occult shop in town. It's at Niagara Falls, and the uncle has this occult store on Clifton Hill. And um, he decides that in order to help his nephew kind of overcome these fears, he's going to establish what he calls the Saturday Night Ghost Club. So it's a small group of them um, where they investigate local urban legends and figure out if they're true or not and try and try and just learn more about them. So they go to different sites around the neighborhood late at night on Saturdays and try and um, learn more about them and kind of explore them. And with each weekend that they do this, every legend that they explore, the main character Jake learns a little bit more about himself. Um, learns how to confront fears and learns a little bit more about the people around him. So it's a book in that um, it, the narrator is the adult um, Jake. So he's reflecting back on his childhood. And so it's about childhood, but it's also about memory and the power of memory and how it changes over time as we learn more about the world around us and, and what things really meant. So he's looking back and understanding a little bit more about the things that changed him and why um, from his, his point of view. But, um, you know, even if we don't understand things as children, they still have a, our experiences can still shape us and change how we view the world um, and the people around us in, in different ways. And so it's just a really interesting exploration of that and a lot of nostalgia woven in of, you know, the, the spooky campfire story and, um, and that piece of it. And I found it really interesting to read. That book sounds fantastic, Emily. I can't wait to read it myself. I would love to know, why did you choose this book? I know the group of us had talked about a few different books that were written by Canadian authors, and I want to know how come you chose this one and why do you think it will be the winner of Simcoe Reads 2020? Yeah, so this book had actually been on my to read list even before chatting with you two about what books we might want to um, suggest for Simcoe Reads, um, because it was one that I had seen in the bookstore probably a year ago, and it was the cover that drew me to it because it's just amazing. I don't know if you can see with the glare, but it just, it was something that kind of set off my sixth sense of there's an amazing book cover somewhere over here and I need to find it. Um, so that was the first thing that drew me in and kind of, I didn't know anything about the book except for the cover and the title and I thought I need to read this. So I had it on my list. And then as uh, the three of us were kind of looking more into it, I realized that it was a Canadian book, which I didn't realize before. And that was just kind of another piece to it that I thought, oh, amazing. I, I absolutely want to read this. Um, 
and then kind of looking into the synopsis of it and finding out, you know, it's set in Niagara Falls and it is, um, you know, has that very um, nostalgic aspect. So it's kind of Stranger Things meets um, Stand By Me, I think is the description in the book. And it just had kind of all of those pieces of, you know, all the things that I loved as a kid and reading, you know, spooky stories by the fire and, um, and things like that. So it was just it had everything that made me want to read it. And now that I have read it, I just know that there's something here for such a wide range of readers, which I think is part of the biggest appeal for our entire community to be reading it because, you know, it's got the depth there that if you're somebody who really likes to read um, and something that makes you think and something that's got different layers to it and something that you can, you know, really build off of and develop your own thoughts and, and, kind of, you know, take your own interpretation of the story away, that's there. But then it's also, you know, it's it's also just a great story and a great plot. And if you want to just read it for that, there's still an amazing, really interesting and fast paced and exciting story for you. So it's got a little bit of that for everybody. Thanks so much for sharing, Emily. Now, in your answer, you mentioned judging books by their covers. And I was wondering if there's anything else you wanted to share with our community about judging books. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So um, judging books by their cover, it might be a little bit of a problem that I have, and I know you're not supposed to do that, but um, it is definitely a big factor of what draws me into new books. Um, once once I get past the cover, I do let the words do the talking, don't worry. Um, but I, I actually built a couple of years ago an Instagram account um, just for fun. That's uh, The handle is at judging the cover, um, and it's just kind of a fun account that Kind of chronicles my my reading and um, different beautiful books that I come across and also my journey as a writer. So um, that's been a fun way to connect with other people who are reading all kinds of different things and I've definitely had um, uh, an influx of books added to my to be read list which is dangerously long. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well hopefully some of our community members will join you on your um, bookstagramming journey. Yeah, and I'll definitely be sharing, I think, a lot about Simcoe Reads as we go. So if anybody wants to follow, then I'm there and looking forward to meeting you. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're so excited to have you uh, championing this book. You've, you've made it sound exciting. I, I feel like everyone in our community will want to read it. Um, and to that end, um, the ESSA Public Library has multiple copies of um, Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson uh, in the library. And we also have ordered um, several digital um, ebooks and some audio ebooks. So lots of different ways for you to read this book and to cheer on our champion, champion Emily. Um, and I also just wanna add that the library is now open. Both branches are open. Um, for limited hours for select library services. So we're here to help you um, visit our website at www.assa.library.on.ca or give us a call at either of our branches so that we can help you out. And if you have any questions for Emily, send us an email and we would love to maybe have another interview with Emily and ask her some more of your questions. So our email address for that is essalib at essa.library.on.ca. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter for updates about Simcoe Reads. It's going to be an exciting program this summer, and you're definitely going to want to be a part of it. Thanks for joining. <laughs>